Hi everybody. Uh, doing a little Oliver update today. We got him out, took him on a walk here, and we're gonna let him eat some grass while we uh, do a Q&A. People have been asking for a Q&A today. It's just a beautiful day to do it. So far today, we've gave him another medicated shampoo. So he's all clean. And while we were up there at the bathing spot, we weighed him again, and he has gained 42 pounds um, in the amount of time that we've had him uh, here at the farm. Things are looking good. Come here, Oliver. Come here. Good boy. Of course, I've always got an apple treat on me, <laughs> so that's no wonder that he'll come. Of course, he spits them out more often than he eats them. He still likes coming. <laughs> going to show you how he's walking he uh he is showing some real improvements he's been tr he's been playing and galloping not galloping but trotting and jumping the creek and stuff in his pen i'll show you how he's moving out a little bit come on bud I think that's a real improvement from where he was. He's so itchy, he likes to push on me. I've got to get to where I can start training so I can get his get a little bit more respect. But if he gets any healthier, he's going to start getting trained in round pen and stuff. He's developing some personality. Got his feathers all washed up today. Bright white shampoo, so he's really looking good. Okay, so we'll just start with all the questions we have. So the first question is from Nancy from our Patreon, and she asks, does Oliver interact with other horses? So he's a stallion, so we have to be very careful about letting him interact with other horses. He is a baby still, and we have this little horse here named Colt. <laughs> and he's a little stallion too. So we've introduced them, and they're getting along pretty good. Um, yesterday was the first day I stayed out in the pen with them for a long time watching how they would get along and Oliver's been in with the sheep already and he has not hurt any of the sheep and he'll even like when he, when the sheep are trying to get his grain he'll take his back feet and kick at them but kick softly to where he doesn't even knock the sheep down he just nudges them out of the way and they respect <laughs> him so he's very polite he wants me to scratch his butt I know it itches so uh so yeah, we're going to see if he can make friends with Colt, and that way he'll have a little equine partner. They were getting along pretty good. Yeah, I think it's going to work out. Colt gets a little bit bossy, I think, huh, yeah. Isaac? you got to be careful when a thousand pound animal wants his butt scratched, it can really push you over. <laughs> okay, so what's next? Okay, one? next question is, when can Oliver have his feet worked on? So, I really want to be able to do some training with him first. Um, he's not bad about his feet, but... You know, he's also not completely stable. So like, hold it for a while, and then he gets weak. It's okay, So though. he's just not quite ready for training. Uh, his feet aren't in horrible shape. I've been putting that uh, moisturizer on him a couple times a week. Friday, uh, the road flooded, but I was gonna go up to this Amish guy's house um, and ask him if he would be willing to work on his feet. My farrier is really not interested in doing it. But about 20 miles away, I have somebody I think will. So I'm going to go talk to them this week. And um, if they're willing, maybe next weekend. Another question is, do you allow visitors? Not right now. Not at this time. We're not asking for too many visitors to come because I'm so far behind with all my projects. And it just takes so much time. And, and it's just hard to, to know who to trust off of social media these days. So until we figure out a better way of managing this, this is all kind of new to us. Our channel's only taken off in the last two months, really. Um, so we're not really doing any visitors right now, other than people that we know uh, or special cases, maybe. But maybe down the road, we don't yeah, know. Maybe we're just trying road. to figure all this out. When is Oliver going to be able to have a stall in the barn? Well, uh, that's up to the veterinarian. So right now with with EPM, it's not good for them to be stoved up in a small area. It's better for them to be able to get out like this and move around and walk. Um, so we keep him out, we keep him moving. Uh, but 
also with his age and his, you know, they're hyper little boys. He's not quite two. Yeah, he's not quite two, be two next month. It's just not the greatest thing in the world to keep them pinned up anyway. I'm looking more forward to him having a big turnout lot, yeah. which we can show you a clip of. I've already cleared a bunch, about an acre and a half of brush and seeded it with a horse pasture mix. And uh, I'm gonna be working on that. I'm hoping to put a really good pipe fence around it. Um, that'll keep him safe and keep the other keep him separated from the other mares. But we do have a stall he can go in in yeah. the barn. Um, yeah, the that stall right there or any of the stalls, the, but the turnout lot that he's in right now with has a good size stall in it. Yeah, that so also. he can get out of the rain and stuff and it yeah. we've been keeping it bedded and stuff. We need to go clean it out right now actually. Mm -hmm. How is your full doing that you picked up and put in your car? Oh, that's <laughs> so I call him Champ. His real name is um grand imagination um we call him champ and he is my best buddy so he's up at the uh lease place but he's literally the first horse to come when i call him and he comes right up to me and he wants my attention all the time he has finally stopped his nipping and biting that he liked to do um when he was six months old he had a real bad habit if you weren't actively petting him or paying attention he'd bite you to get to his attention that he wanted um <laughs> but you know he's doing great since Image passed away, his father, uh, I'm going to keep him a stallion and show him for a couple years and see if I want to use him as my herd stallion instead of Bob. So that's what my plans for the future are with him. This one is, since you have new followers, do, can you do a recap on your farm and family? Okay. So my farm is in central Missouri. My parents' farm is connected to this farm and my childhood the end of my childhood anyway this whole farm that we're in the middle of right now was abandoned and had grown up in thorn trees and uh cedar trees and you could there was no field fence buildings nothing not even a well but i used it like it was my own stomping grounds as a kid and it was always my dream to get it bought back up buddy and uh we did get it bought uh six years ago and I've done all this work in the last six years. I've cleared 50 acres, trying to get the grass established. I'm still fighting that battle. Um, trying to get the infrastructure right. For the family, um, Becca and Isaac both got some horses that they're gonna be training this year. Mary's horse is trained already, so I have three kids. Mary is gonna be a senior in high school next year. Uh, she's a junior right now. Becca is a ninth grader and Isaac is a sixth grader. Isaac is really into mechanics and four wheelers and he's rehabbing a lawnmower right now that he's gonna try to sell as like a yard utility run around tractor. <laughs> and then he's gonna work his way up to being able to buy a three wheeler is his goal. No, four wheeler. Oh, a four, oh, four -wheeler? wheeler? Okay. And he's got his new buddy he's been messing with a lot, Colt. <laughs> yeah, he plans on training Colt to pull him in the wheelchair with the harness. <laughs> That's his plans for Colt. Becca is the one that really does the most work with the horses. She's actually not even, I don't even consider her an amateur anymore. She's almost a professional level horse trainer herself. And she's got a mare that she's training to sell as a trail horse this year. And she's got a mare that's about to have a baby that she has trained to show. And then Mary has the Finnish show horse that we all show, Lucky, me, Lucky You. But Mary's main thing is basketball. Mm -hmm. She's an all-star basketball player, always makes the, you know, the, uh, what do they call it, like the regional team and all district teams and all that stuff. Yeah. So she's pretty awesome. She's really awesome at that. And then Emery, um, <laughs> I'll just go ahead and answer another question. Somebody asked if she works outside the home. Um, she was working for my dad running his YouTube channel and learning the ropes and then about three months ago she decided to focus more on ours and sure enough this explosion that we've all seen is because she's put 100 percent of her effort into it now so she's editing at least 20 hours a week on these videos and other than that that's uh she you know does every all the farm work uh, she feeds in the mornings she's a really good shepherd she <laughs> just knows sheep so that's why i'm thinking about uh, getting into the sheep bigger and better because sheep are selling pretty high right now and everything else I do um, my 
my day job covers our living expenses. My horse job covers the farm payment. But now I need a third stream of income, or actually be a fourth because I have rental houses too. Need a fourth stream of income to pay for college coming up in a year. So that's what the idea is with the sheep. That's our long term yeah. goals. Yeah. And so. we just love them. Yeah. I love them. <laughs> well, we want to make money doing stuff we like. That's why I train horses. That's why we're getting sheep. Yep. We moved up the hill so that he'd like the grass better. For some reason, where we'd picked, he wasn't liking the grass. Okay, this is what is your vision for your for your future farm and to make it safe for all the animals. So, from Tina, she's from our Patreon. Yeah, so the main thing, my main vision, and this is a good spot to show you too, is this is the kind of fence I have right here, four, four wire uh, barbed wire. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower this wire down to about five or six inches and then halfway in between, I'm gonna put an offset high tensile at this height and then I'm gonna put an offset high tensile at the very top height where it's not just like a temporary electric fence, but like a professionally looking installed one where it'll keep everything off the fence and safer. Um, this will keep the sheep out or sheep in up here. And th this will keep the horses from leaning over and fighting them across fences that way. So it'll keep everybody safer. And then we can hook on with our division paddocks just hook on to the electric and run up the hill and divide it into little sections where we can rotate all the way down this strip on both sides of the road and both sides of the creek and hopefully we can get about a 30-day rotation going where each individual paddock uh, or turnout lot gets um, an adequate amount of rest. And we probably won't run the horses and sheep together on that. What we'll do is we'll run the horses uh, first and bring the sheep right behind them so yeah. that they're uh, rotating all the time. That's The horses will like grass better and the sheep will like forbs and broadleafs better. So they'll eat different things and we'll just keep them moving all the time, try to get ahead on it. And then I also have a couple places leased so that I can let the grass get ahead more. Uh, but I need to improve my soil quality and I need to improve um, the amount of grass yield and stuff. So yeah. that's my long-term goal for the farm. And then as far as the horses, uh, I need more stalls. So I have a goal to put a lean-to off the right side of my barn and connect it to his turnout lot so that I have a stud, like a stud turnout lot where they can come into the barn, but also go out into the paddock. And that's where I want the best fence. But all together, that's probably gonna cost me, I'll do all the work myself. I built the barn myself. Um, and I just hired help on the last day to get the metal up. So that'll probably cost me about 10 grand in material though, to get the barn part done. A really long-term goal would be paying off the farm because I'm not gonna quit my day job till the farm's paid off. I just would not be able to sleep at night. Um, and for my day job, for you, those of you that don't know, I look, work at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri as a design engineer. Um, I'm not an engineer by degree, but I just have a lot of construction knowledge, so they put me in the design branch. I do have an engineering uh, management degree for managing construction projects, and that's how I got my job experience. Uh, I did that for about 15 years. But I really do not like working on the computer all day long and designing all day long. I like being in the field. So I don't like my job. And ever since COVID, everything has gotten really wonky with the government and I'm ready to be done with it. But not while I have a farm payment. Can you share more information on your horse training school? And then also people have asked, um, do you do give trail rides on your horses to the public? Okay, so on my riding lesson program, um, it's 200 bucks a month. We meet on Sundays. I guarantee an hour, but it always runs a lot longer than that. But this is show season now, and I don't know how much time I, I'm going to be able to devote to that. So I'm thinking about kind of winding it down for the season. And I haven't started a trail ride thing, though. But I'm thinking about maybe this October hosting a trail ride where uh, viewers and stuff could come in and that have horses that are close enough and seeing how how i could set that up so be cool. we'll 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 look into that more and i'll kind of judge your response to see the level of interest in that okay how tall are you 
The fox trotters don't seem very big beside you. What is your true average height? <laughs> so, and maybe, oh, and what's the height of the of a fo average fox trotter too? So, like April is just a hair taller than Oliver, uh, or the same height as Oliver. I am a giant, so I make <laughs> every horse look small. I'm uh, in my prime. I was like six five. Now I've shrunk a little bit because this is pulling me down. Gravity's got a hold on me, but I'm I'm still just about six four. Um, and I'm just a big, big frame person. Um, with that being said, I have really long legs and my anatomy, <laughs> yeah, my anatomy, when I'm sitting a horse, I can hold that horse and get around that withers and be part of that horse better than somebody with little short legs bouncing up and down that mm -hmm. weighs 50 pounds less than me. So, um, a lot of people are commenting, I'm too big for that horse, you're too big for that horse. I have a feel for these horses. I can feel when they're getting tired, I can feel when they're weak, I can feel when they're going to stumble. Um, like I always say, I, can, I grew up on horses and I've trained hundreds, I can almost speak horse. <laughs> they are also way stronger than people think. I'm going to do a video on the 20% rule. Uh, real soon. I've went really deep dive scientifically into that study that was done. It was done by Ohio State that first came up with the 20% rule. Hugely flawed by the scientific method, the study. Uh, just a couple points off of it. The horses were put, laid sedentary for four months with no exercise. Then they were had static weight put on them and increased it and put them on vigorous exercise on a treadmill or on, on workouts. Well, like I said, a static weight is not the same as somebody that knows how to ride. Then, if you put take me out of my office job and put me to work with 30% of my weight on me, yeah, I'm gonna show a lot more stress and a, that that's hard on me compared to if I work out every day and build up to it and you put 50% of my weight on me. Now, I'm not saying horses should carry 50% of their weight, but I'm also not saying that 20% is the right amount either. It's an individual basis. Also, the length of the spine, the width of the shoulder, the rider, all of that needs to be taken into account. Um, so I'm gonna do a video on that someday real soon and really go into the, how that study was done and all the errors and flaws in that study. Then I'm gonna go into another couple studies that show horse development and when you should start riding horses. Uh, yeah, sure, horses aren't fully developed to their five, but it doesn't say that having a horse have a job before it's fully developed is gonna hurt it in the long term. People are making that leap on their own. They'll show that same chart that shows the development of the spine, the development of the legs, and what age the growth plates close. And they'll say, see, if you ride before that, they'll get arthritis. That chart doesn't say that. It says when they stop growing. But just like an astronaut in space, if you don't put a load on those growing joints, the bone density falls. I've got other studies that were done uh, in scientific you know, journals and published in horse magazines that show the mortality rate of racehorses that were raced at two years old compared to the racehorses that weren't raced until three years old. And the bone density of the two-year-old racehorses is higher, resulting in less injuries on the track, so much so that it affects the mortality rate in them. So I'm going to show that study. Then I'm going to show my own anecdotal evidence of x-rays of like um, Image, who was rode and shown as a two and three-year-old, hard by men. And his joints at 27 had zero arthritis in them. And... That may be the only one that I have uh, x-rays of to show you, but I have many horses here over 20 that were all broke at, at two years old. And I think they're stronger today for it than if they were weighted till five. Also, there's studies on the psychology of horses. And you gotta think about in nature, when are they breaking away from their parents and starting to really work as a horse to find themselves a pecking order? Well, it's at two years old when they get run out of the herd and they form bachelor groups and they start fighting each other and running each other and working. And that's when their sociology evolves from being a foal to being a horse and where they're going to fall in that pecking order. 
that type of language skills, horse language skills, translates into training. Do you wait till a horse is five or six years old to start riding it? That's way more stressful on their brain than it is stressful on their body to ride a two-year-old. But I'm gonna have to show a lot more evidence to even get people to even listen to my arguments on this because that is the most dogmatic thing in horses right now. These good-hearted people want to think that it's cruel to work two-year-old. Well, yeah, maybe it is to go out and ride one till it's sweating and shaking from exhaustion, but to go up and down this gravel road or ride in the barn or start it in the river to build strength and to build muscle, you, you need to open your minds a little bit and listen to some other evidence because um, maybe we don't have it all figured out yet, but I'm gonna do that video soon. Donna from our Patreon asks, um, what is the average height of a fox trotter? Okay, the average height of a fox trotter is actually decreasing right now <laughs> um, because there's two famous horses, um, one's named Legend and one's named Grand Central. They are producing wonderful show horses. And um, in the case of Grand Central, they're producing wonderful temperaments too but they are very small horses. So they're producing the most of any stallions out there in the last 10 years. So they are getting a little bit smaller, but they still, you can find fox trotters up to 16 hands and you can find them down to 14 even, even 13 three. Um, but that, that's, that's about the average. What, what's that? The, just in between, in between, in between that? 14 and 16, yeah, okay, so 15 that's hands. Yeah, that's what I was Okay, can you give an update on the preg pregnant mares from Charlene from our Patreon? Sure, do you want to just walk down there and show them? Okay. What was Oliver's previous name or his register name? It's still his name. His name is GC's Lucky Strike. No, 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 GB. GB Lucky Strike. Yeah. Like I said, yeah, GB's Lucky Strike. <laughs> uh, so the man's na initials were GB that bred him bred his mother and raised him and lucky strike I guess he just come up with but how big is your farm 168 acres and my dad's is 283 and we are surrounded by 6,000 acres of Mark Twain National Forest uh, we have no neighbors and we have tons of riding opportunity that's why it's so good for me to train horses here how long will Oliver be in quarantine well he's basically not in quarantine right now he's just got uh, hormones and testicles so <laughs> he's, uh, he's never gonna be turned out with the herd yeah uh, and I really don't like gelding horses I know that's gonna be very contentious because a lot of people say with the slaughter pipelines and everything why would you want to breed a horse and like I said in Oliver's first three videos he's too high quality of a horse to have ever really gone to the slaughter pipeline until he got EPM the lady wasn't taking care of him enough to even realize he had EPM once she would have realized it, I don't doubt she would have, if he would have lived long enough, sent him to slaughter. However, the vet said, and with his protein and blood levels and as bad as he was getting, the next time, the next time he laid down would have been his last time to lay down. That's why he didn't lay down with us for 11 days yeah, after yeah. we got him. If he's not rideable and not sound, as a gelding, I'm not going to be able to stay interested. I'm sorry. Uh, because you know all i'll be doing is just pouring effort i mean he's taking almost all my time right now uh over all my other horses because he's got so many needs if he was a gelding in that i'm sorry but then he has no purpose in life and i believe all my dogs have a job all my dogs are trained to do something all my horses have a purpose um it's a farm and that's just how i was raised and how i believe i know it upsets a lot of people because they don't view animals as needing to earn their keep they just should be a pet to look at and cherish which is great if you have one and you can afford it but with him being a stallion he still at least can have a future to where he can add value to something because uh he could breed you know another clydesdale mare and have registered foals you want your butt scratch skin bud okay and i don't think gr means just like value to us but to his his life. He want he wants a, a purpose in life. I think so. I don't know. I think all animals want a purpose. I mean, that's why God gave them to us. They're we're here to uh, you know we're we're the stewards of them, but they're also here to serve us and to um, provide for us. And we that's why we're the 
uh, entrusted to have dominion over them. And it's, okay, okay, okay. He says, shut up talking and scratch me. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't love them and don't pamper them and treat them great, too. I do, but um, I also like, I just like for them to serve a purpose like God intended them to do. So. Okay, this is a good question. What made you choose the Missouri Fox Trotter horse breed? My grandpa was the greatest influence in my life. As a little kid, I was his shadow. And uh, my grandpa is one of the founding fathers of the breed. Like back when they used to judge horses to see if they could fox trot and then would register them, he was a part of that. And he um, showed for, I don't know, 50 years at the world championships and won multiple world championships. He's in the hall of fame down there at the headquarters of, for the MFTBHA. And I learned a lot of it from him, but he's who instilled the love in me. So it was never a choice. It was always Fox Trotters. Mm -hmm. That's what I grew up with. Now that's not saying I don't love other breeds and appreciate quality and everything else. That's why I was initially drawn to Oliver. If you remember the real way this story started, I wanted Oliver for my own personal uh, enjoyment as a project horse for the next couple years to make a farm payment. I, that was before we ever knew he was sick and before that lady no sailed him wanting a you know a really high price for how poor a shape he was in um, and then after that it was the YouTube channel that made him uh, you know end up changing his story and saving his life hey this is a good question um, I, I don't remember if it was on our question and answer list or not but I remember somebody asked um, have you heard Oliver uh, nay <laughs> or no. speak and we haven't but i just saw him he sees these mirrors down here he just about did it but we haven't heard him he hasn't made a noise uh, he's kind of done that <laughs> to me like the deep like greeting friendship thing oh he has to me, i hadn't heard that but like a real saw but no nays at all or winning how old how old will, will oliver be when full grown in between 17 and 17 three that's the range of his parents and that's what the guy said I should expect. No, but how old will he be once he hits that is what they were asking. Five. Five? Yeah. Okay, this one says, you are clear in stating you are not a rescue, yet you do take on aged or unwanted horses. Why and what suggestions do you have for self-claiming rescues as how to fund themselves like you do, rather than constantly creating fear or drama to get donations? Yeah. So. The reason that I, I buy some of these horses, like when I was originally wanting Oliver, he was a little poor and sad looking and uh, what, like classy, is because I know how to add value to them. I'm talking financial value this time, but also increase the value of just their, their life. Mm -hmm. um, because like I said, I do have to make the farm payment. So I can buy a horse that like classy, that's unstarted, untrained, underweight, parasite ridden, I can fix underweight and parasite ridden in two months. That just takes groceries. The, the rest is what I enjoy and do for fun anyway. If I wasn't making a dime, I'd still be riding and training young horses. I don't even really enjoy riding a trained horse that doesn't need to learn from me because I enjoy the whole aspect of taking them from a blank cat canvas to a finished um, piece of art. You know, that's that's where I get the pleasure from it. I was the same way with dogs. Don't really like a finished trained dog. I like taking a puppy and making a trained dog. Um, that's just part of who I am. So that's why I take in the less desirable is because there is more room for but the bottom line is profit. You know, I have to make the farm payment, but it's also what I enjoy. Now, as far as how to set up the, the charities that do it, um, if you want to help horses just to be helping horses, I suggest you be rich when you start. It's, we're not rich. I mean, we barely make it. The farm payment or the farm really was way over what my debt to income ratio would allow us to borrow against, but I had perfect credit because I you know, I always I always make it work somehow. If I have to work 10 jobs, I'll make it work. So I was able to get the loan and we bought it, but as far as charities they're so skeptical and people are there's there are so many cons out there that I never wanted to be a part of any rescue that's why I'm pretty touchy about Oliver being a rescue because um, I've always been so critical of the ones you see on Facebook and I also think like you know 
a lot of those horses that are quote unquote getting rescued a lot of them need to, they're just so far gone that like the most humane thing for them to do, do would just have been euthanized um and then a lot of the other ones I'm, I'm afraid would never had a chance of going to uh slaughter to begin with that's why i kept trying to point out in the comments and i said it in a couple videos oliver was not doomed for the slaughter at the time of the first sale in cuba when we first saw him, when we first saw we him. on him once they found out he would have had uh epm which they hadn't even noticed yet they probably he might have been then but at the time of letting youtube buy him and everything we didn't even know i didn't think he would ever go to slaughter yeah and i tried pointing that out i guess it's it's a fine line like the way we're seeing this wish list and the support we've received i almost see it more like viewer appreciation gifts than i do donations because if everybody went away right now or youtube deplatformed me or demonetized me I would still take care of him yeah, on my own. Still be doing I it. would find yeah. a way to do it on my own. Yeah. So I, I'm trying not oh, to buddy. ask for donations, yet I'm also trying to balance loving to ride this wave out and just be thankful for the blessings that God is giving us. And if somebody wants to pay for my fence, <laughs> I guess I'll let them pay for my fence. I don't know. You know, uh, I'm very happy to have all of his feed bought for the next yeah we, several yeah. months i mean probably six months of feet at this point right now maybe four months we are you really know thankful. i say it as viewer appreciation quit it buddy, oh, buddy. Oh, you want to scratch okay okay it says oliver seems to be an outlier a horse not really in your lane why then oliver given how easily he tugs at the heartstrings how do we know it's more than a move to expand the channel given the paint horse you bought who is totally your lane what the dickens are you doing with oliver so if you go back to that first video when we were at the sale barn he just caught my eye i was just yeah it's something about the nostalgia in our in, you know i'm from st louis originally with the budweiser clydesdales my whole childhood we grew up my dad would play a bluegrass show for uh anheuser bush every year and i'd go straight to the clydesdale barn um i got to drive some heavy horses when i was 12 years old I've trained countless Shetland ponies to pull. I just trained April to pull, and now I'm selling April, and I had that wet, that new wagon I just bought. And I thought, man, when I saw him, I'm like, that would be fun to get him to pull that wagon. I went and checked him out, and I saw right away his temperament's right for pulling wagons. So that was my original thought with him. I'd train him to pull that wagon, get him broke to ride, and I'd sell him for 2024, 2025 farm payment. Yeah. That was my original goal. Now he has become the mascot of the channel. Yeah. And he has blessed us with the growth of our channel. He's not solely to blame or solely the credit for that. There was no. a couple other things though. I was hauling Isaac on that wheelchair before we bought Oliver and Rally right Rayleigh Link or whatever reviews reviewed his video of me towing Isaac in the wheelchair. And our subscriber count went up by like 5,000 in a couple days over that. And then the other thing is before we bought Oliver was oh, buddy, when my wife quit her job to focus on the YouTube channel. Yeah. So those two things is what really kicked it off. But then Oliver was more like God's prompt like An god was speaking to emory to tell her to go yeah, ahead and quit and focus on it I, and i think oliver is what was god was preparing her for yeah i wasn't planning on quitting my job it just kind of i just all of a sudden felt like i was supposed to and god was telling me to and i'd been praying for a long time because we we had been having a hard time and um i just kept hearing that i was supposed to quit my job but it was scary um doing it but within i think two weeks of me quitting um we fe we saw Oliver at that auction, and the and the, our site our channel just started growing from there. And it was just I think Oliver and the channel growing was just um, confirmation that that we're kind of going in the right direction with our lives. Yeah. We also had a question from multiple people, and we forgot um, to answer it while drink. we recorded this, but it was. Um, if we can make a calendar of Oliver or our homestead. And yes, we do think it's an awesome idea and we do want to do something like that. 
Um, I piddle around in photography and artwork. I love taking photos of the animals on the farm. So we do want to incorporate that, but it is going to be down the road before we get to it. I have a couple different things I need to work on first, like a website we're trying to get out. But in the future, there will definitely be a calendar and we'll let you know um, once we would get it done. Okay, so here's the brood mares. Chablis has got the biggest bag yeah, she does. and the furthest along. Uh, even though Soix here, the paint, hey, baby. is actually due for You can see it down there. It's no, getting I can't. bigger. Oh yeah, it's, it's starting to get bigger. But it's nowhere near what Chablis is. Yeah. And this little mare is just starting to make the milk veins. So she's got about a month, month oh, and a half. Yeah. And we got them down here in this lot because they have access to this creek that's flowing real good. And we have them pinned up because there's a thing called fescue toxicity, which I've covered in my other channels. You can look back at those videos, but basically they can't be on grass. They have to be on specialty hay for the last 45 to 60 days uh, before they fold. Once they fold, we can turn them right back out. I do have a good idea in my brain though. Who thinks that Oliver and Soix <laughs> maybe should get together later this summer or something because Having a Soix? Foxtrot or Clydesdale cross <laughs> might be pretty cool. That might be fun. <laughs> Funny little fact about horses is it's the, it's the mare's uterus that determines the baby size. So a Shetland pony could have a foal out of Oliver with, without having any complications. Um, they couldn't do the physical breeding without complications, but AI, a Shetland could have a pony out of them. So it would be no problem. Plus right now, Soix is bigger than him. <laughs> she is, isn't she? And also, if you're already subscribed, you've heard us mention Patreon a lot. I'm just a little bit less uh, edited and a little less um, trying to make content that matters and I'll just show more day-to-day -day stuff on there or I have more time to just talk to you or answer your questions on Patreon. Hey. And it's an easy way. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Stand down to that. <laughs> Other thing that reminded me, I want to give you the update. His sheath is 100% healed. His sheath is completely normal now. So that's a good indication his blood work is coming back to where it needs to be. Yeah, anyway, our link to our Patreon is, is in the about tab and in the description of this video, if that's something you're interested in. Um, but like I say, subscribing and commenting is free. The other thing, we all don't come from the same background in horses. So I know there's some of these things that I've answered today that you disagree with and it, that might trigger you a little bit, but take the good parts, leave the bad and leave the bad parts. Um, I wouldn't do them if I thought they were bad. Uh, if you think they're bad, then you just don't do them. I show the good, the bad and the ugly. So if I'm ever wrong or I make a mistake, you'll see it on, on film and you'll see the evidence of it. But so far what I'm doing works for me and that's why I do it. Um, somebody else just asked, why is he so itchy? We don't know why he's so itchy. He had parasites, he had mites, he had lice. We've treated all that, but we're giving him some really high grade, high powered medicines right now for EPM. That could be working his way through his system. Uh, that, you know, those medicines have to go through his liver. Liver uh, enzymes kind of create itch in the hide a lot. Um, it could be it could be all of that uh, i am going to treat him with a zemectrin type an ivermectin based wormer because those can kill external parasites as well where the the safeguard that i used for his gut last week wouldn't kill an external parasite you know we're doing all we can for oliver he is showing a lot of improvements and we will keep you updated on his progress mm -hmm. as soon as possible i'm going to do a training video where i teach him to do some yoga stretches as soon as I get a minute and next weekend, I'm hoping to get those hooves trimmed. So stay tuned, hit subscribe, forgive me for the stuff you don't like, <laughs> and we'll keep getting better. Bye.